Hey, good morning. My name is Stephen, if you've not been here before, and today this video is about gruesome finds found whilst metal detecting. And I have to say to you that seriously, if you've got anybody in your household who might be affected by this, stop now, let them watch it after you've watched it first, just in case. To be part of the team, hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so we can continue the journey forward together. Today I'm going to be hunting with my Deus X35 and my control box on full tones on a brand new permission which is 500 acres. So whilst I'm just setting this up, let's start with the most gruesome find, number one. And I'll catch you right after that. I will have to provide a narrative for this one as the people did not want to be recognised by their voices so therefore the sound has been removed. Thinking they'd found an animal trap, they persisted in trying to dig this up. And once they got it out of the ground, it looked slightly unusual. Something was inside, just wrapped in a piece of plastic type cloth. Trying to force it open with the spade, they got it open and unwrapped the contents. And they were shocked to find out what it was. The police have been notified. <laughs> Well, that first signal on this new permission has turned out to be a button. It seems to have some insignia or something on it. It was once silvered. The loop is missing, but it gave a cracking signal. So I'll show you that again later when I've cleaned it up. I've never found one of these before. A musket ball with its casting sprue still attached. Well, that's where the musket ball was. And here is where another target is, and it looks like another button, like the first one. I'll clean it up and we'll compare and see what it looks like. And another button. Musket ball, button, button. Okay, it's a guessing game. I'll give you a clue, it's showing 80 to 84 on the visual display. out. Let's send a plug. Right, let's see if I can find it. Oh, I can see it, I better send the button. Oh, hang on, yep. Another button, another button, and now for something that's not a button. I initially thought that was a pot leg, but now I'm not too sure. Another button, 67, 66, 79, 80. That one sounds the best. Let's dig them. Well, it was a button, and that. Now I know what that is. I want to see if you know what it is. And now for the most gruesome find number two. This one's of special interest to me because I went mudlarking with Simon from SciFinds, YouTuber, and Nick White, YouTuber, Tideline Art, and we came across a place called Execution Dock. And the story of this place sent chills through my whole body. Let's have a look. So we're now going to pop into the prospect of Whitby and there's some gallows. What? Why is it there, Simon? Well, it's to represent Execution Dock, which was somewhere around here in Whitby. Nobody knows where exactly because it's been lost over time. But they used to hang pirates on the Thames and it used to be a grand show. People used to turn up and watch them hanging. Really? Um, and the pirates were so good and so, so sneaky and so good at avoiding capture. They did it in the Thames and they put them in a... a uh, uh, so that they couldn't escape. And just to make sure they were totally dead after the hanging, they waited for the tide to rise up so they could definitely be sure that they were dead. Oh, grim! So imagine how many people were put to death somewhere around here. And that just represents the history behind that. Oh, so they hung them first and then put them in a gibbet? Yeah. Please say. What a way to go. Another button. Button. 
button, another button, and possibly a coin. Well, if anything, the quality of the buttons are getting bigger and better. Now you're talking. That is a pot leg. A lion's foot. Number three on the list of the most gruesome finds ever found metal detecting once again involves Simon from Sci Finds. Now I love the way that Simon tells this story and with such dignity too. So let's jump over to Simon and let him tell you the story. So behind me over there is Dead Man's Island and that is where they buried a lot of the people that succumbed to illness and disease on the prison hulks in and around 1800 because the guys that were in the prison hulks and young, young men as well and young children um, they didn't have any relations or they weren't really seen as humans really they were criminals sometimes uh, only just for stealing bread and things like that if they weren't transported to Australia they were set out here on the prison hulks and a lot of them succumbed to all sorts of diseases because it was a very hostile place to do your time I know we're having a bit of a joke about things but Fundamentally, we do have the deepest respect for those that have died and uh, just giving them a little bit of courtesy when we come here, giving them a little bit of dignity, you know, showing other people how, how cruel life was back then. And what I'm about to show you is a bit gruesome, so you may want to look away now. And look, I've just found a jawbone. That is incredible. So not only have we got a jawbone there, come and look at this. Look at all those. Look at that. Now that is a child. These were from the thing now, <coughs> weren't they? Um, Napoleonic prisoners of war? Well, they're all from the, they're all prisoners of war, they're all, um... I suppose, yeah, kids would have been as well, wouldn't they? Yeah. There are no words. Well, at last, a coin. And this one is definitely a coin. It's a half penny. 1934, George V. Another half penny, again. George V. Button. Uh, it's a penny this time. I think that's one of the Georges, maybe the second or the third. I'll have to check that one out. Button. Well, I've not found one of those for a little while now. It's a thimble. It's quite a big one as well. And at least it's in one piece. Well, almost. It's a little bit broken on that bottom edge. Another button with a little bit of age in it now. About time to. It's very thin. It's copper. And I can just see, where is it? I can't pick it out on the camera for you. But that is a Jetton. J-E-T-T-O-N, Jetton. In case you've never heard of it before, you know how to look it up now and see what a Jetton is. Another button. Well, I hope you've been counting all those buttons. I've got a question for you a bit later on where you can win one of my keyring coin hats. I think it's about time for the next gruesome discovery in your cake hole. Outside the small Czech town of Kutnahora lies a structure that is both impressive and, well, bone-chilling. Its story starts in the 14th century when the Black Death was ravaging Europe. Tens of thousands of victims were buried beneath this solitary chapel. In fact, the basement of the church was continually demolished and excavated to make room for the massive catacombs. By 1500, the half-blind monk who ran the church was totally out of room, so he started to stack the bones inside of the chapel. Over the next two centuries, the church was enlarged twice, and in 1870, a Czech carpenter named Frantisek Rint was tasked with turning the piles of bone into something artistic. This unsettling aside Feynman actually had an amazing result. Brent was able to carefully craft more than 40,000 human bodies into a coat of arms, fireplace, and hanging chandelier. The artist even signed his own name in bones by the entrance to the church. Right, so I'm walking now to a new part of this mission. It's so huge. Get some great exercise and get the cake belly off anyway. Button, another button, but this one's a little bit more unusual. If I clean it up, you may be able to see some figures on there. We'll see. At last, something different. It looks like a knob, a finial, that's been lost from something. You can see where it went through the lid of something, and it was like folded back, hammered down, creating that 
gap between the two to hold it securely on, but obviously it wasn't that secure. It definitely looks like a knob or a finial to me. I think that's probably impossible to age. <sighs> Button. And I think somebody had a dog called Daily. Telephone number on the back. I might just give those a call to see if they want me to return it for them. Hello? Uh, hello. Uh, you have no idea who I am. I'm calling you because I've just found your telephone number um, on a lost um, dog collar name tag. Oh. <laughs> now, it's it's a red bone with the name, I think, it's a bit worn, but it's, I think it says Daily on it. Uh, no, this is on this is on a private farm, not far. I'm a metal detectorist, you see. I've just come across it. Oh, no. It was about um, it was about three or four inches in the ground on a footpath that goes across um, one of the farms. I forget where I am, but I'm not far from Thorn something or other. Thorn. Thorna. Thorna. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Well, now you've. <laughs> Now you've got my telephone number, um, if you would like to send me a text with your address, I'll post it to you if, if it's important to you. It, it, don't worry, we've got a new one. Thank you very much indeed. That's kind of you, though. Well, that's kind of you. Thank you. OK, bye-bye, bye. One of the reasons I did that is because I've done it before. Not with a dog tag, but with something else. It might, I think it was a, maybe a keyring tag or so, I can't remember. And I got a permission from it. So that's another way to get permission. Always ring something if you find a number on it. You never know what will happen. Most gruesome find number five. A couple were out detecting in the wilderness and they discovered this strange aroma. This odour in the wind which they followed to its source. And when they got there, they found this. I all of a sudden just stopped in my tracks. I'm like, I just smelled something dead. Oh, oh boy. Oh, Eric. Oh boy, that's gonna be a bad one. That's what stunk right there. The underside of it was all rotted out and the flies and maggots. Can you believe that right now? February, and we gotta worry about maggots? Are you gonna carry these out, babe? Uh, no. <laughs> that one looks even worse. Nice job. There we go. We got this, uh, we got the radio collar and the collar with the guy's information. Well, I just found something that looked like a watch winder, but I weren't sure. And the very next hole, I find a watch winder. Now, how spooky is that? Well, look at that. That's great. I haven't found one of those for a very long time. In fact, I think the last one was a silver one. It's probably dating back to William IV, something like that. But it's a penny bent into that shape and given to somebody as a love token. Now that's an interesting piece of lead. It's very crude if it's what I think it is, but because of that rounded shape, I think it is what I think it is. And that's a pot mend. So in the old days when they had a leak in their pot, they would plug it with lead. I wonder how many people died of lead poisoning. I never want to see another button again. And for a bonus one, number six. What would you do if you got a nice signal, dug it up, and you found it was a suitcase? He found a suitcase that would change his life forever. Curiosity got the better of him. He just had to see if anything was inside. An eyeless skull peered back at him from deep within. Police detectives flocked to the scene and found more bones underneath of the skull. A lab test revealed that the remains had belonged to a woman who was most likely in her 80s at the time of her death. Aside from that, little else can be determined. So, not a brilliant day, lots of buttons. 
but lots of signals and there's still loads more on here and so much more land 500 acres it's going to take me some time to get around that and there's over 300 acres with crops on so that'll be nice later in the autumn well, let's leave me there chatting away in the background let's get down to more serious stuff pick a winner for the coin hat giveaway the coin hat keyring and if you have entered in the last video then you would have put a comment including you left the hashtag coin hat giveaway and if you did this could be you so good luck high tone high tone well done contact me within the next seven days using the form which you can find linked in the video description if you haven't yet subscribed please consider doing so right now leave a thumbs up don't forget to click that notification bell by the way so you can be notified again when i bring you another top five and i'll catch you later so don't be a stranger in your cake hole hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be part of the chat